Today I am joined by another fellow incoming architecture student. He is based in London and he's going to University of Cambridge this upcoming school year. And today we're going to have a conversation regarding the differences between majoring in architecture, engineering, and design. Hi, Callum. Hey, Nat. Hey. Awesome. Thank you so much for agreeing to have this conversation with me. I think it's super beneficial for other incoming students yeah, just absolutely. when selecting their um, major. Yeah, and it's quite interesting as well because we've both obviously changed major so I used to study engineering I used to study aeronautical engineering and switched to studying architecture and obviously you changed as well so we're yeah. in quite a good place to compare our experiences between all three subjects majors uh well yeah to help anyone else in the same position tell me a little bit about yourself and like where you're from and what you study now I'm Callum I live in London I used to go to Imperial College London I studied uh for a master's in in aeronautical engineering which is a four-year course I finished the first year and then dropped out and reapplied took a gap year I'm going to the University of Cambridge in the UK to study architecture starting this fall this October I don't know what else to say about me <laughs> that's probably the no, important no. Part. okay <laughs> that's great um, yeah as I mentioned in the intro today we're going to be discussing primarily the differences between architecture engineering and design however we are also going to be having another video featured on Callum's channel which I'll link down below in the description box architecture within the United States versus the UK so you never took an architecture course before right um no, not exactly, but I have, I've worked like a lot with architects. What firms have you worked in? Who have you talked to specifically? Um, I worked for something called the Small Piece Trust in the UK, which is basically like university taster courses. But I met kind of someone else who had dropped out of engineering to do architecture. I'm in contact with another Cambridge graduate who studied architecture. And so I'm kind of going in to do work with him this summer before I go. Have you worked in engineering? Yeah, so I also did, I did some work experience at Rolls-Royce in Derby, big jet engine, aero engine manufacturers in the world. Rolls-Royce being the UK version, General Electric being based in the US and literally worked in their aerothermal department looking at things like CFD and all of your like computational base analysis stuff for jet engines and some testing as well. So that was super interesting, although I actually didn't enjoy it at all. So <laughs> God knows why I ended up going into engineering anyway and then dropped out later. What specifically did you hate about working there that caused you to drop out later? So the thing that attracted me to engineering in the first place was that I loved the complexity of machines and engines and whatever, but I liked the idea of designing that myself. I liked the idea of having sort of like a project goal, something you wanted to achieve and coming up with a creative solution to that problem. Only later did I realize that the reality of engineering is because this stuff is so complicated. You look at like an aircraft or a rocket, whatever it is, there's so much that has to go into it. The reality is actually your day-to-day -day job as an engineer is much more mathematical. So the thing that kind of ultimately made me want to switch to architecture is wanting to be more on the creative side of things. I'm wanting to be working on the like the creative idea behind the project rather than the sort of the nitty gritty. Yeah, I mean, architecture, you kind of figure out creative solutions and then you hand it off to the engineer, begging them to work out the actual logistics, math and physics behind it. So yeah, I can totally understand that. Yeah. But then as the architect as well in practice, um, obviously architecture in practice is different to architecture in education as well, isn't it? So then yes. in practice as the architect, you're almost like become kind of a multi-skilled person don't you like you're like kind of the manager as well like you have to interact between the engineer and everyone else yeah we kind of did the similar thing with designing the concept for it when i was an industrial design major but we never really had to work out the logistics but that seems very tedious and time consuming too. yeah this is actually quite interesting so yeah i should probably talk more about my experience at imperial specifically then that's what i went into engineering wanting to do and what right. I ended up doing was, so our exam questions, we would be told about something. We'd be told about a wing that was in a wind tunnel and we would have to analyze it and explain why it was doing stuff. It's so technical and it's so specific that the like the bulk of your work isn't the creativity. The bulk of your work is making sure that it's gonna work. Just majoring in architecture, it's always based on the aesthetics, but also like how the form follows the function. Especially in your first years, we don't necessarily ever, ever, ever have to consider gravity or anything like that. Now that I'm in graduate school, I'm working on physics 
oriented stuff, structures and stress related loads. The further you're in, in studying architecture, then maybe you kind of almost incorporate back those similar concepts that you studied in engineering yourself. So here are the basic pros and cons for architecture, engineering and design. So pros for architecture, one, it is super creative. You are able to express yourself. It doesn't necessarily feel like work, especially for creative minded individuals. Also, you have incredible traveling experiences. When you study architectural history and you learn the basis behind building construction form intentions for the design, you will never travel the same way that like you did originally before you started studying architecture. Also, you have a very strong bond with the students, but also with your professors. I think that's partially because you're always there grinding away studying architecture. So that can also be a con. You are always sleep deprived. It's just what the stereotypical architecture student embodies. Yeah, and it's very detail oriented. When you're standing up and you're getting criticized for a design, it's typically because you never really thought out a specific detail for one component of your architecture, house design, whatever you were personally modeling. So that can also be a con and you really just have to pay attention to the details. So now Callum's gonna talk about the pros and cons for engineering. Oh yeah, I think the first thing is you get to work on really, really exciting technology, you get to work on really exciting projects. And literally engineering is obviously, you're working on what is becoming like the new technology within the world. There are lots of opportunities within the student body to kind of really go to town with whatever it is that you're actually interested in. So the whole point of the field is obviously, of course, you're working groundbreaking technology and that is really exciting. Suddenly you're working with all of these people, you achieve things together that are very, very exciting and not possible by yourself. So teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. If that's your thing, then that's a pro. If it's not, then it's probably a con. I feel like in architecture, you probably get to work a little bit more for yourself. I mean, Nat, you probably tell me a bit more about this. Obviously, ideas are kind of fundamentally your own in a way that, that that's not always the case in engineering. Also, engineering as a field is very, very employable. You don't necessarily have to go into engineering with an engineering degree. Sons of engineering, similar sort of stuff to architecture, sleep deprivation, and it's more, it's obviously like towards exams in engineering. But you can definitely, get left behind. It was very common for people to effectively do no work all year and then realise towards exam season that they've got so much work to catch up on. So it's really challenging, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Keep pushing through what feels impossibly difficult. I feel like it's the same. It's a, That's another good con to add to the architecture list because it, it does take a lot of self-motivation. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do engineering anymore. Yeah. I don't want to do architecture anymore. I do think that architect and engineering are both like renowned for being especially difficult to or not, not necessarily especially difficult, but especially uh, like requiring a, a, a serious amount of time dedication. Actually, this is a good question. With architecture, a lot of that's in the studio, isn't it? So maybe it's still a little bit more sociable, perhaps? Whereas in, in engineering, for example, it's not at all. You'll sit by yourself in your room or in the library working by yourself. It's really horrible. My uh, first couple of years, we were doing those individual projects, like you mentioned earlier, but slowly you had the group projects. But all of us were working in studio together. So mm -hmm. when you needed a break, from drawing floor plans or your sections or elevations, whatever you were doing, then it was very easy to socialize with other people. That kind of subtle thing about like, are you gonna be okay working by yourself for hours and hours on end just for that, just kind of for the sake of passing one exam or actually will being able to do that with other people make a massive difference. But yeah, there's just things to think about. That sort of creative thing is a slightly different personality traits that are gonna align better with architecture than engineering that aren't immediately apparent. Yeah, for sure. For those of you who have been following my channel, you are aware that I was an industrial design slash interior design major coming into my first year at Ohio State. Pros for design, I generally really loved it and it's more creative like architecture is, but a big con is the salary, first of all, which we'll get into later, but also it's not really a highly employable field. A lot of my people majoring in design, they're struggling finding a job in this pandemic. It's very challenging to get your foot in the door. I changed my major to architecture because I was able to find a job. There was a significant salary increase. And also I kind of gained more respect when I told people I was majoring in architecture. There was kind of this stigma about being a design major that people would say, oh, so you're just gonna decorate homes for the rest of your life, like that can be your hobby. I think that's really interesting because for me, it was almost actually the other way around because mm. being, oh, when I dropped out of Imperial, Imperial is like, 
kind of up, you know, uh, sort of top 10 university in the UK. Um, when I left Imperial, I didn't have a place at Cambridge. I didn't know where I was going to go because I wanted to do something that felt more like it was felt more right for me. And that's talking about your the stigma that you had about interior design like affecting you. For me, it was almost the other way around. I almost judged myself for doing engineering because I didn't enjoy it. And that there is a balance between doing stuff for other people and the stigma associated with it and the salary. You've got to fundamentally enjoy what you're doing as well. So but I also think just admitting to yourself that you want to make a bigger salary and you can do something that also makes you happy, there's like, there's no shame in that. So starting salaries with architecture, you make around 60K. Uh, you can easily work your way up to six figures. I want to say in about five to seven years, especially if you are a project manager within the United States. So majoring in design, if you are fresh out of design school, in industrial design, you can make around 50k as your starting salary within the United States. And interior, I found a range from about 40k to 50k. It depends, honestly, on your firm, where you live, and so on and so forth. Yeah, in the UK, engineering graduate scheme salaries can be anywhere up to about 30,000 pounds. Like anything, obviously, your progression comes over time. And the typical thing with these graduate schemes is that you work kind of with the same company and work your way up. But it's definitely it's definitely a stable salary in engineering is I think a big thing. Whereas in architecture, it definitely ranges kind of very vastly and certainly in the UK. According to the RIBA, which is a regulation body for architecture in the UK, according to the RIBA, your internship years, the average salary is between 21 and 28,000 pounds. What is one thing that you wish you have known before you majored in engineering? It's like a really exciting time when you leave home and go away to university and socialise and you're free and you're independent and whatever. It's quite easy to get carried away in all of that. And in engineering, it's really easy to get left behind. And once you get left behind, it's really easy to get uh, demotivated. And certainly because of what I said before about it being quite solitary, you're always working by yourself. Sometimes it's difficult to see the light at the other end of the tunnel. You have to work hard right from the start. One thing that I wish I knew before studying architecture is how time consuming it is. It will literally dominate your life. You're going to have to learn really effective time management skills. Finding a good balance between your work and school life and your personal life because you don't want to get burned out in the architecture major a lot of people do so i think if you find that good balance and learn how to effectively block out and manage your time that is definitely a really good thing to know for architecture okay so advice for becoming freshman yeah <laughs> <laughs> work hard don't kill yourself oh my gosh is it... so yeah if you're going into engineering what i would advise is stay on top of your tutorial sheets and things super important that you do that stuff it sounds like it doesn't matter and it sounds like you can get away with it believe me you cannot <laughs> stuff gets hard really really quickly and Advice for design majors is learn how to take criticism and roll with it the minute you disassociate yourself from your design projects and you take the constructive criticism and you actually apply that to your projects, I think your projects are personally going to improve. And for architecture students, honestly, travel as much as you can if you are able to. You need to find that spark of inspiration in architecture and I think traveling is the best way to do it. Having already switched your major, do you feel like you made the right choice? Have you like have you looked back? I had a conversation with an architect in Philadelphia and we were on the phone for five minutes and he told me, change your major to architecture, don't major in design, you could do everything you want in design with an architecture degree and honestly I haven't looked back since because he was 100% right. Everything that I wanted to accomplish I could have done with an architecture degree. So just enjoy the journey and if you do change your major it is a-okay. Anyway we need to, we should probably yeah, wrap, wrap up. It up. <laughs> okay, oh my God. All right. Yeah I know this is gonna be like 40 minutes of footage. That's it for today's video. A big shout out to uh, Callum from London for joining me on this episode. Um, I hope you had fun. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been great. <laughs> so once again, I will link his channel down in the description box below. He does these beautiful architecture sketches. They're absolutely stunning. And yeah, until next time. Subscribe to Natalie as well. That's the important thing. <laughs> Aw, thanks.